Oh, hello, everybody. Um, yeah, hello and welcome to Tableau User Group, our November edition. Yeah, my name is Juliana and I'm co-host of Tableau Berlin User Group. And I am really, really excited about this session because it has been a while since we organized a user group. Um, but today I'm really, really happy that you are here because we have two amazing speakers and yeah we have two topics uh, which will be um, very interesting and they will help you to be even faster and more productive in work with tableau and yeah let me introduce our speakers uh, first heidi uh, she's from Lubik. She is a um, senior BI consultant and she's a co-host of Data Plus Woman here in Germany. She's also Tableau Ambassador 2022 and I'm really happy to have you as a speaker Heidi and uh, yeah I would uh, suggest the stage is yours and you can share your screen. Thank you. I've started my countdown just to make sure that I'm pretty much on time. Um, so yes, thank you for uh, for the nice introduction. Thank you for inviting me. Um, as Diana already said, my name is Heidi Kalber. I'm a senior consultant at Woodmark. We're one of the um, premier partners uh, of Tableau here in Germany. Um, and I've been using Tableau for the past, um, let's say, going on six years now and over time I've collected a number of tiny tips um, and today I want to share a mix of them with you so many of them will be more to more tips that helped me really in my beginning phase of using Tableau and some maybe catering more to an advanced audience um, so just two words about myself before I start um, again I'm Heidi um, I'm I'm quite active on Twitter, or at least I used to be. So feel free to find me there or reach out on LinkedIn. That will be fine. Um, I'm very passionate about alpacas, my ukulele, and visual analytics in general, as you can probably tell from my being here. Um, I'm also, as Diliana said, have been um, co-leading Data Plus Women Germany for the past three years. So if you want to join us, everybody is welcome, not just women. Um, feel free to use the QR code, but I will put that up again later on as well. Um, for my session, it will probably be a bit fast. So please do yourselves a favor, try not to take any notes or try to click along or anything. Everything that I have uh, I will be showing here is detailed on my blog, queenofdata.net. Um, and I mean, when in doubt, you can always re-watch the recording on a slower speed. Um, so just lean back and enjoy. All right. Um, so for my first tip, I want to show you one of my favorites, uh, which is right-click dragging. Um, so, you know, when you drag fields into the view, Tableau will give you the default aggregation, which is usually the sum. In my case, I'm looking at the time to ship, so number of days it took us from when the order came in to when we actually shipped the order. And of course, the sum doesn't make any sense here. So if I show you the numbers, you can see 31,000 days until shipping something doesn't make any kind of sense. So we would have to use, for example, the average or the median or the minimum or the maximum. And I want to use all four of these things, all of them. Um, so what I usually do is I bring in the field as I have done here, um, and then I go into the context menu uh, to the measure and change that. And of course I can do that, but I want to find a quicker way. And what I can do for that is right click dragging the field into the view so using my right mouse button to drag this into the view and then this window will pop up where tableau asks you what kind of aggregation do you want so in here i can uh, go for the median and then uh, right click drag use uh, the minimum and right click drag that was sales give me a sec uh, right click drag and use the maximum so this is pretty quick. And I can not only do that for measures, but also for dimensions. So let's say I want to use the um, distinct count of um, order ID or something like that. And I know I have many, many order IDs in here. So if I bring them into the view as they are, as a dimension, Tableau will take considerable time to um, create the query, send the query, 
query the database, um, get all the data back, reload or load that and render the view. Um, so not super performance friendly. So instead, I just want to bring in the count distinct of order ID directly. So right click, drag into the view and Tableau will ask you, okay, what field do you want to drop? In my case, it's the count distinct, press okay. And I have that in here right away. Um, fun fact, I can not only do that for measures and dimensions, but for date fields as well. Um, so if I want to bring in, let's say the um, quarter of my order date, I would usually bring in the year and then change that, but I can also just right click drag that into the view and Tableau will ask me what part of the date are you actually interested in, similar to when we uh, bring it into the filter. Um, so I can simply uh, choose quarter in here and that will bring directly um, the quarter, but I don't actually need that. So let's drop that again. Um, so you can tell right click drag one of my favorite things. Um, I'm can also use uh, some default properties. Um, so for example, you know, when I bring in time to ship, Tableau will try to give me the sum, but the sum will never make any kind of sense for time to ship. So instead I wanted to uh, bring in the, for example, average by default so that I don't have to think about it consciously every time I do that. Now I can do that by going to the data bane, right clicking on the field I'm interested in, going to default properties and changing the aggregation to average. And you can see that where my average time to ship said average time to ship on the axis label before, it doesn't say that anymore because Tableau knows average is my default. So it doesn't have to tell me that I'm using something other than the average there. So Tableau will always assume that you know what you're doing. And as such, it doesn't have to tell me anymore that I'm using the average. Um, I can also change the number format. So I know that my time to ship is always in days, but it doesn't really reflect that in the view. So what I can do is I can go to time to ship, right click default properties and change the number format to a number. Um, and I want only, let's say one decimal place, which is enough for the, uh, um, for the average. And then I want a suffix, which should be D for days, or I could even write here days, but honestly, I'm, I'm happy with the D. Um, press OK, and you can see that it changes everywhere I'm using this field. And not only in this view, but in all other um, views in this workbook, all other sheets I have ever used and will ever use in this worksheet will default to one decimal place with a D for days as a, um, as a unit. And the fun thing is I can do um, or I can use um, default properties for dimensions as well. So, for example, my ship mode, we can see that same day delivery is obviously the fastest, then it's premium shipping, then standard shipping. Um, so I always want same day delivery on top. Of course, I could uh, drag it to the top and it's not much effort, but I have to remember it everywhere I'm using this. And I don't want to have to remember that. I want Tableau to, to just do that by default. So I go to uh, ship mode, right click, default properties and can change the sort. Um, so now I can change it to a manual sort, bring in same day delivery to the top and you can see that it changes in the background and this will again change in every other sheet I will ever be using in this workbook. Um, next one, let's talk about calculated fields. So sometimes we may have somewhat complex calculations in our workbooks um, and we may want to bring in some comments. So there's a lot of ways we can do that. Uh, first thing first, we are currently looking at the state label. You can see that some states have the two letter abbreviation, some just have the full name and some seem to be written backwards, I guess. Um, and this is kind of confusing. So I want the person who is using this workbook because maybe I have prepared the data um, and then somebody else has to continue working on this workbook. I want them to know what I'm actually doing here. And I can do that uh, by uh, right clicking on state label, going to default properties and changing the comment. You can see I've already put something in here um, so I can even um, um, change the formatting here. And whenever I hover over this field, Tableau will bring in this as a tooltip, the comment that I have here, um, not only in the data pane, but also everywhere I'm using this field in the view. So that is pretty helpful. Also, let's actually take a look at the calculation that we have here. Um, 
So you can see that I'm, I'm doing quite a bit in here, um, which may be confusing to other people. So I can simply add in comments either in line, maybe at the end of the line, um, can put some text here, or maybe I even want to skip a whole line. So when I comment this out, simply by putting two forward slashes at the beginning of the row, Tableau will skip this line uh, while computing the, cal uh, the calculation, which can be helpful, especially when you're trying things out and you are uncertain, do I actually want to use this later on, but you also don't want to delete it, then simply put it as a comment. And you can also uh, put a whole block in a comment. So in this case, I don't want to put the two forward slashes in front of every single row here. That's too much work for me. So I can simply put in forward slash asterisk at the beginning of the block and then asterisk forward slash at the end of it. And you can see it's all grayed out. So everything between these two asterisks is now a block comment. And I promised you some hidden information. Um, so you can tell that I always have this right hand side open because this gives me a whole host of information about all kinds of calculations and also calculations that I have already done. So I can see states reversed is a calculated field I created to use in this one but I forgot the calculation behind it. And of course I could right click edit to, to check what's going on in there, but I don't want to leave this calculation. So instead I can simply click on this and on the right hand side, I will see a preview of what the actual calculation behind this calculated field is. So I can refresh my memory here. Um, when you're using an axis, you have four drop zones. Um, one of them, and, and let me quickly walk you through them. Um, so one is at, either end of the axis. So if I drop something either on the left hand side or right hand side of the axis, you can see I have this little dotted line and the two um, the two green rulers telling me that I'm now bringing a separate axis on exactly that side. So if I do that on the right hand side, Tableau will drop the extra axis on the right. And if I do this again with um, the middle, then it will put quantity in the middle here. So pretty simple. Um, one other option is the little square that we have on the left hand side of the of the axis. So if I move profit and move it to the right, uh, the top right hand corner, you can see that it has this little um, square here. So if I drop it there, that will replace the axis that we had before. Um, I can also move something to the same axis. So simply drop it on the same axis. You can see the two green rulers. This will add, uh, this will bring in a combined axis. So you can see I now have uh, my measure values and measure names here. And if I want to bring something in, but not on the same axis on a secondary axis, I simply move it to the opposite side of the current axis. So in this case to the top, and you can see this um, dashed line with the green ruler telling me I'm now bringing in a secondary axis here. So put beside each other, replace, combine, and dual axis. These are the four drop zones. Of course, you can accomplish all of these in different ways as well, but just knowing what happens when you put things on certain parts of the axis may help you drop things in the correct places in future. All right, um, so I'm using very specific colors in this view um, and I can use even more specific colors. So for example, if I go to color and edit colors, I have a whole list of beautiful um, um, color legends in here. You can see I even have some uh, special color legends that I created, but I want something even more special. So I can simply double click on any of these um, data items and this will bring me to, um, to this menu will look a little different on a Mac. Um, and now I can either select any of these 16 million colors or I can use it um, or I can bring it in if I know the hue, saturation and the value values, or I can bring it in using the HTML code, or I can simply pick a screen color. So for example, I have the zoom blue in my view here, which I could use, um, press OK, and now this will be the beautiful zoom blue. Not what I wanted, but I could do that if I wanted to. Um, sometimes I may want to um, color my um, my measure values by exactly that. So in here I'm using sales and profit ratio and discount weighted um, and I want to color them by their respective values. Now the thing is if I bring in for example sales on color 
this will color everything using sales, which is not what I want. Instead, I want to color my measure values by measure values. But if I bring in measure values on color, it will give one legend for everything, which of course doesn't make any sense because sales has values up on into the hundred thousands and discount weighted will always be a percentage. So it doesn't make sense to use the same scale. What I can do if I have measure values on color, I can drop use the drop down menu, so context menu, and use separate legends. This will give me one legend per measure that I have in here, uh, which makes the view a lot more beautiful. Now, five ways of labeling on top. I will show you three of them because the rest doesn't matter as, as long as you know at least three. Um, I when I have a um, when I have horizontal bars. Um, so in this case, when I have a a measure on columns, Tableau will always label the axis at the bottom, which kind of makes sense. But I want this uh, name sales to be at the top here. So there's different ways of doing that. I can simply double click in columns and bring in sales in quotation marks um, that will create an ad hoc calculation called sales with the content sales. Now, I don't want this to be twice in here, so can simply right click and hide field labels for columns. This will only leave sales and I can simply get rid of the title in the axis here pretty quick. The problem with this is if you have a huge data source, this will create a string calculation in every single row of your data. So not necessarily ideal for performance reasons. What you can do instead is bring in a helper data source by blending. What do I mean with a helper data source? You can simply open up some kind of Excel file or it could be a text editor and you type in sales, which is the name of the field. And then again, sales, which is the content of the field. You copy these two, um, simply press um, control copy, and then back in Tableau, um, control V to paste. And this will bring in a helper data source. So this will copy from the clipboard. You can see I have a new data source, uh, which is called clipboard with the current timestamp. And this really only contains exactly what I just copied. And I don't need this sheet, but in my uh, worksheet, I can now simply go to the clipboard data source and bring in sales from there. Tableau will give you a warning about no existing relationship, which is fine because it only just contains the one field. So it doesn't matter if we have a relationship or not. So we're happy with that. And you can see I now have sales in here, which may be a little bit more um, performant. And one third way that you can use if you have just the one measure in here, you can simply bring in measure names and columns, and that's that. Now, when you're using stacked bars, you may want to label the total of them, so the total sum of this bar. Um, the thing is, if you simply press the T, um, Tableau will label every single segment, which is fine and also helpful. Now, what I used to do in the past was duplicate this field, um, have a dual axis in the background, remove the detail, synchronize, and then label that, which is a lot of work. So I'll show you a faster way, and you can simply right click on the axis and add a reference line. So um, I want this to be per cell, and you can already see that we have a line in the background. I want to label using the value, um, and I don't need any kind of tooltip, and I definitely don't need any line. I also do not want Tableau to recalculate this, because that would mean every time I click on a segment, Tableau will, would give me a new reference line, which I'm not interested in. So deselect that as well. Now, this is a bit boring, so I can click on it and form it. Um, first thing I want to do is make sure that it actually shown. So this one is shown on top of the, uh, the bar, which I'm not interested in. So I want my alignment to always be on the right hand side. You can see Tableau makes space for that and also kind of in the middle of things. And for my numbers at the moment, it's pretty close to the bar. So I want to have a space or more space in front. So I simply go to numbers, um, remove decimal places and add in a space as a prefix. Or I could even do two of them. Um, so you can see that gives me some space here. And I also want this to be a bigger font and black so that it's really obvious that this is a total. Um, and that's an easy way of uh, labeling my totals in stacked bars. Now, if I'm bringing in a total, 
as a stack bar, that's something I may want to do. So go to analytics and bring in a total. Now, what I would kind of expect is Tableau to keep these segments, but it doesn't. It simply adds in the total as a whole bar, um, and you can see that it has given it a separate color. But I want this total to also be colored and um, to, to show the actual segments. So what I can do is I can duplicate my field that I currently have on rows, simply duplicate and put this to rows instead. And now you can see if I simply sort this, that we now have a stacked grand total with the colors. I have six minutes left on my clock, so I'll show you a quick few things. Um, when labeling date axes, especially when using months, Tableau will by default give you the whole name of the month, always using May and November, which I personally find kind of impractical. Um, so we can change that. We can right click and format this and go to dates and make this a custom formatting. So what you can do is bring in, let's say two years or two Y's for the year. And then if you bring in one M that will give you the single um, single digit abbreviation of the month or the single digit version of the month. If you bring in a second M, this will give you the um, two digit um, number of the month. So with a leading zero, as you can see, a third M will give you the three letter abbreviation. A fourth M will give you the whole name of the month and a bit counterintuitively, a fifth M. So five M's in total will give you the single letter abbreviation of the month. Please don't use this if you only have January, June and July and your fiscal year starts in April. That will confuse the heck out of people. Um, my personal favorite is a three letter abbreviation of the month using three M's. All right, um, let me show you one of my favorites, um, which is uh, filtering without losing the rank. So in here, I'm looking at um, the Eurovision um, scores of 2011 um, and you can see that Sweden came in third place. I'm personally interested now in how the other Scandinavian countries performed. I don't want to have to scroll through everything so I simply filter on Scandinavia. But now Tableau recalculates the rank and suddenly Sweden is in first place which is not completely wrong. I mean among the Scandinavian countries Sweden was on top of the score but overall it only scored in third place. I, and I want this to be reflected even after filtering. So the problem is the order of operations, or well, not the problem, but why this ha happens. Um, so you can see that I'm currently using a dimension filter, but table calculations get calculated after the dimension filter is applied. So if I want to work around that, if I want to retain my table calculation, I have to use a filter that comes afterwards, which is a table calculation filter. And we can do that by using a simple lookup calculation. So let's call this region filter. Um, and in here I will use lookup. Now lookup as you can see in the description, returns the value of the given expression in a target row specified as a relative offset from the current row. So what I'm interested in is the region. I have to, um, I have to aggregate my region, um, which is fine in this case because I'm actually looking at the country and I only have one region per country. So minimum or maximum or attribute would be fine, but I'll use the minimum instead. And now I have to uh, declare my offset relative from the row, but I want to look at the current row. So my offset is zero. So this will essentially give me back the region of my current row. And I can use this. So let's get rid of the region filter. If I put uh, this new region filter and simply put Scandinavia, we can see that this retains um, the value of my calculations. And I think that's pretty much out of time. So um, Thank you so much for attending this one. Again, you can recap all of these tips on my blog. Um, most of these that I just showed you are at this exact link. I will also put that in the in the uh, in the chat. So thanks again, and have a lot of fun trying out these tips in Tableau. Thank you so much, Heidi. It is just amazing. I could listen to you. 
for ages, you know, because this is so important just to master all these tips and tricks in daily business, because you can save your time. And yeah, uh, thank you so much. Very, very useful. Um, I just check uh, the chat if we have any questions. So guys, if you have any questions, just uh, put them in the chat. And meanwhile, um, I just wonder how long did it take it to you to gain all these tips and tricks? Well, it changes from tip to tip. Um, so many of these I found in my early months of using Tableau, but I continuously learn new, new tips. So um, I also gave a lot of trainings. Today I gave a training and learned something new from a person who just used Tableau for the first time. Um, so it's really precious collecting all these tiny bits that you didn't know about the software before. Yeah, I think this is a very good point, you know, uh, especially if you give the training so you see what the people just need, what are their needs, because there are a ton of tips and tricks, but what are really, really useful. And you just brought this to the point and I like it very much. And uh, yeah, I have another question. You also showed uh, some options with comments on your chat. And I know that comments um, are also very interesting point by one on another dashboard. Are there any possibilities to make some coin, uh, comments on the dashboard? Yeah, absolutely. Um, different ways you can do that. Um, so what you can always do is bring in the captions of the sheets um, if you want to give some description for individual sheets. Um, so let me actually uh, share my screen again real quick and see if I can find, can I find an example? Um, yeah, so what you can do is simply choose the sheet and then bring in the caption which you can use to, to give some information. So that will be shown and add in a comment there. Um, you can also always bring in a, a floating text object, um, bring in a helpful comment, and then um, hide this behind a show height button. So right click and bring in a show height button so that you can actually hide and then show this. Just need to make it obvious that this is actually containing a comment. Um, so again, different ways of bringing in comments here. Yeah, really amazing. Thank you so much for sharing this with us, Heidi. And yeah, um, and we still don't have any questions. Um, I hope, guys, you really like this session. And uh, I really would like to give you, Heidi, now the opportunity just to talk to our audience. Maybe you would like to share something with us. Just use this opportunity. So please. Yeah, thank you. Um, again, it's it's not only important to to be great at data as you do it yourself, but to also encourage others to um, to uh, to join the community. And I try to do that through um, Data Plus Women Germany. So if anyone is keen to join our future events, or if anyone wants to try the public stage and wants to speak at one of our future events, um, just reach out to me. Um, I'd love to see you there. I'd love to help you uh, give you a platform. Um, so yeah, I hope to see some of you at future events. Thank you, Heidi. Thank you so much. Okay, and now it's time to go to the second part of our session. And I'm really, really curious about the next talk. Um, so those I just say, the stage is yours, Shorhruf Norbekov. Oh, by the way, Shorhruf Norbekov is senior data analyst at Izialo. And yeah, this will be very, very interesting. Please, Shohro, just share your screen. Hi, everyone. So let me share my screen with you. So you will be able to see my screen now. Just a quick words about myself before I start the presentation also. Uh, give me a second. Okay, do you see my screen now? Yes, we do. Good. Hi, I'm Shahrukh. I'm 28 years old and initially uh, I'm from Uzbekistan, but I moved to Germany 10 years ago and I have been working as a data analyst for the last five years. And my career, I started uh, in one of the German fintechs called RateBay 
and Idealo I joined, joined two years ago. And initially I was uh, a part of customer experience department, but nowadays I'm in the B2B analytics team. And today I'm going to present you or show you how you can create animated graphs in Tableau. And uh, for this, I'm going to use the data of, uh, from last year and, to uh, and I will show you what were the top 10 products or purchase products at Idealo on Black Friday last year. And here I need your uh, comments and also guesses. So what do you think, uh, what were the top 10 products that we sold last year in, during the Black Friday? So you can write in the chat your guesses and I can later tell you were you right or not? I don't see any, do we have a chat? Oh, yes, we chat. do. So we have um, already some options. This is clothing, Apple airbags, mobile uh, phones. Mobile phones, smartphones, electric bike, headphones. All right, all right. Airports, TV. <laughs> Okay, then let me show you first. Uh, so maybe about the idea to creating the animated graphs. How I came to this idea, I'm sure that you all have seen this kind of bar uh, bar chat races in LinkedIn or uh, other Instagram and Facebook, where you can where you could see the uh, world population and how it changed during the last twenty years or decades. And this idea gave me also uh, inspiration to create the animated graph on base of the Black Friday data. And here's our final results. Uh, before I'm going to show you how I created that, uh, I want to give you our look about uh, animation. So on the left side, you see the line chart and on the right side, you see the bar chart race. And here's our animation. If I click on the play button, then as you can see, it starts to move. And it's, you can see also on the right side, the bar chart race. And on the left side, you can see also the products uh, sold in the certain uh, hour. And as you can see on the right side, we have uh, Philips Hue smart lamps in the first place, and uh, it follows by the PCR tests. And as one of our EU guests, we have also Apple AirTags and also headphones. And by the end of the day, it's interesting, which of the products will be on the top first place? Yeah, we have Apple Airports in the top one. Uh, then it follows by the SodaStream maker. And then we have also Google Chromecast and FIFA. One interesting thing about FIFA, uh, nevertheless, it started only in the afternoon. It made up to first place. So let's now go again back to Tableau and let me share my screen one more time. So, or you, you, you see already. And now I'm going to show you how, I, how you can create it in Tableau. For this, uh, we have here the date and also order references and the title of the products. So I, I'm going to bring the date into columns and also make the count of order references. Uh, then once I have this data, I need it not by year also, but uh, hours. Okay, let's change the view to entire view. And now I have the development uh, of sold items by hours. And then as a next step, I want to bring the hours to the page. And once I did it on the right side, you can see also the action buttons. And if you click on the uh, play button, then you can see how the dot change, uh, it starts to move. You have all of the animation, but what you don't have here is the historical development of the sold items. And to make it uh, visible, you have to click on the show history button. And once you clicked, you have to select here, uh, mark to show history for all data. And after that, you will be able to see also the historical dots. But uh, okay, let's play it one more time from the beginning. And if you play it, then uh, there are also historical dots. But what we want to have here is also the line chart, as you have seen in the previous uh, video. To, the hint is here, you can of course click on the line, 
but it doesn't help you. It doesn't give you the result of the line chart. And the hint was, which I have found uh, last year is to select the circles. And once you clicked on the circle, you will be able to select here also showing the dots as a trails. And if you click on the trails, then you will see also the trails, uh, the trail of the salt items. Once you have it, you can also play it one more time from the beginning. And now we have also the line. Now we have also the animation. And now we have also the dot. We can see also the historical development of the salt items. And as a next step, I want to bring the titles to top products into the color. And since we have more than 10,000 salt items at that day, I'm going to filter it only by the top 10 uh, products. Once I have it, uh, as you can see, now on the right side, we have 10 titles, 10 products, and we can play it one more time again. And it, everything, everything works well. But uh, what we want to have here also, the, not the hourly salt items uh, per product, but the running total. Uh, and to have this, you can click on the measure uh, to and select here uh, and add here the running total, quick table calculation and making it running total. If you click on that, you will be able to see the um, running total of the salt items. And to make it a bit clear and beautiful, you can bring the titles into the uh, label and allow labels to overlap other marks. And maybe we can also match mark colors and make it bold. And as a next step, you can also change the name of the sheet. Let's call it top 10 products. And here you can also click. Oh. I think I don't see the changing uh, window, but we can continue. So in the, by the end, I will show you how I changed uh, the title, but I'm sure you know already how you can change the name of the sheet. So let's create the next, uh, the next animated graph about uh, rankings. And to calculate it, you have to bring the order references into count and copy it into columns as well. And once you have done this, you will have here the total number of salt items. And as a next step, I'm going to bring the titles uh, to top 10 products. Oh, I have added now every, or, uh, every item, but I can click on the filter and later the order references. Cool. Now I have also the titles, uh, now I have I can see also the salt item per, per product. And I can also match mark color and allow the uh, allow labels to overlap other marks. And as a next step, uh, as you can see here on the left side, you have here the total salt items. And you have to change from continuous to discrete to have that uh, in order. And after sorting, you will be able to see what product was sold in as a first place, in the, uh, as a top one, as a top two, and as a top three. Now you have to change the number, uh, the sold items number to rankings. And to make this, add here the add table calculations. And let's choose the titles. And we need the calculation type uh, running total. After we had the running total, we have to select the titles and let's make an order. And as a next step, I'm going to add secondary calculation and choose here or select here secondary calculation type of rank. Once you have done this, you have to specific dimensions and click on the title. And now uh, we have to select also the unique uh, calculation or the unique places, unique uh, parts once you did it, you will be able to see the ranking of the salt items. Before it was the number of the total salt items and now we see the ranking. And now what we need additionally is the animation. And to have the animation, we have to bring the date into the page. And instead of year, we are going to select the hour. And once we have the hours, 
we added now one more dimension, one more measure, and that's why we have to make some adjustment in our uh, previous edit calculations. So let's start with the columns and a table calculation by the specific dimension. And we need here the running total for our by date. And now uh, we have to also add the next uh, adjustments in our calculation. So we have, before we had just a title and now we have also hour of date, we have to select it and select also the starting every title. We want to have for every title, the number of sold items at certain point. So once we once you have chosen this and make the adjustments, and if you play uh, and, and if you click on the play button, you will be able to see how the ranking changes. So let me play. Uh, let me make it bigger for the entire view and hide the null values because we don't need them. And if we play it one more time then you can see how the products change and how the ranking also changed, but it's not smooth because we didn't add the animation. And to add the animation, we have to click on the format and you have here the animations. Once you clicked on that, you, uh, it is by default off, but we can uh, enable it. Let's start it from again. And now it's more smoothly. So you can see how the bars change and how the ranking changed for the products. Do you have any questions so far? When I look in our chat window, we do not have questions. All right, right then now. let me show you one more thing. So in the previous video, in the beginning of the uh, presentation, you seen you have seen uh, there were some uh, shapes of the products, and you can also add them here uh, to make it more beautiful and also understandable for the uh, for your stakeholders or for for your um, people to who to whom you want to present it. And to do this, you have to copy the columns, or let's make it otherwise. We have to bring the titles into shapes. Uh, and that's why I'm going to change the graph type to shapes. And now we see just the dots. And if you bring the titles to the shapes, then uh, the shapes gonna change. And by default, you don't have the shapes of the products. And this you can bring, uh, this you can add to your machine, to your Tableau repository. And the repository I can, uh, I can share with you in the comments session so you will uh, in the chat so you will see where have you where you have to put your folder with the shapes with your with your customized shapes in order to change it in tableau so i have here the top products and uh, once you have done this you can also select the data item and uh, choose the right uh, shape of this once you apply that you can change the size since we have the colors, it's not so clear. And now it's too big. Let's make it smaller. And now we have the products and now we have also the shapes. And as a next step, I'm going to bring back the bars. Let's change the shape type to bar again. Let's bring the title to the color. Let's delete the title from the shapes on the right side. And now we can make the dual axis and synchronize the number, uh, synchronize the axis. Once you have done this, you can see here how it changed, uh, how the view changed, and now it seems more beautiful and more presentable. And you can also hide the headers and also hide the labels from rows. And if it started from the beginning on, then we're gonna see the shape of the product. We're gonna see the number of sold items and we see also the rankings of them. And this button shows you how, uh, how quick should the animation should be. So we have here the option of slow, we have the option of normal and we have also the, also the option of fast. If you click on the fast, then it will be faster. 
and on the left side the duration it, you, uh, this one you can also change from by default is by 0 0.3 seconds but you can also make it very slow by two seconds and it will be really 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 slow so now is the question how you can uh, save these animations in one uh, video and use it in your presentations. Let's change first uh, title name. So top 10 products. And make it uh, bring them into one dashboard. Let's delete the title legends and bring the hour into bottom. So let's change the title, make it more beautiful. So presentable to your stakeholders. And to be clear, we can also add the H uh, letter, which means the hours in our case. And let's make the change for also for the uh, graph on the left side. And maybe you can also add the title and make it uh, Black Friday edition. So we have now everything and Depending on your machine, if you are Windows user or Mac user, there, there are softwares that helps you make a screen recording. And for Mac users, it is quick, uh, quick player. And if we start it, then QuickTime player. So in QuickTime player, you have the option of making screen recording. If you click on the screen recording, you will be able to choose the part of your screen which you want to record. In our case, this is the middle, and you can select. Uh, you can uh, click on the record button, and also start the animation from the beginning. And now, what you have to do is just to wait until the end of the animation. And once it's done, you can stop recording and use this video in your presentations as a, a visual visualized graphs. And for Windows users, there is another software which I can, uh, which I will definitely share with you in the chat. Uh, the, that's for free, which you can download for uh, in, uh, to your machine and use it also to video uh, to making a screen recording. All right, let's stop now. Screen recording. Now we have also our video here. So it was about my presentation, how you can create animated graphs in Tableau. I really hope that you liked it and uh, I really hope that you learned something new. And if you have any questions, you can ask them now or also write me a message in LinkedIn. Thank you so much, Okruh. It was really amazing. I think the animation really make this wow effect if you just look at the dashboard and uh, yeah, um, you just really would like to play with them. But I just wonder if this animation works on the same way like uh, on Tableau Stories and on Tableau Server or should I consider something? What, what do you mean by uh, Tableau Servers? Tableau Server, online, embedded. I, I think it's possible. So you can publish it into Tableau Server and you, you, there you will have also the action button. And once you click it, it will change. It's going to oh. uh, the, the, the graphs, animated graphs. Okay. And do you have may, maybe some other best practices where we can use this uh, function pages? Because it is really interesting. It's a good question. <laughs> I really like this feature, but I have never used in a daily business uh, and I haven't created any graph which I shared in a daily basis 
uh, or uh, shared with my colleagues or with my stakeholders that uh, were used on a daily basis. Okay. Unfortunately, okay. I can't I get any best practice on that. <laughs> no worries, this is okay. I just check our chat windows. We do not have any questions. Thus, I just would like to uh, give you now a possibility to say something, to share something with our audience. So just, yeah, just use this couple of minutes. Now, first of all, I want to thank you for uh, May, giving me opportunity uh, presenting the uh, how to create animated graphs in Tableau. And also thank you for everyone joining uh, our session today here. And I'm really looking for the next uh, uh, sessions with you. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, guys. Um... This is it. Uh, then if you would like to share something, some one of you would like to share something, maybe you have some job opportunities or maybe you just working on a very good, um, interesting project, just use this chance. And in meanwhile, I would like to use the chance and say that yeah, that we are cu currently looking for uh, some support for Tableau user group because I'm working alone uh, for now. And uh, if you are just interested in co-hosting of Tableau user group in Berlin, just let me know. I put my data here in a chat, just give me a short message. You can reach me through the Gmail or Twitter. And yeah, let's rock it together and this is it from my side thank you so much guys thank you to our speakers it was amazing i really liked our sessions and it it is i, I learned a lot and it is very very good input so thank you so much and have a good afternoon bye bye thank you you too bye bye thank you Thank you, bud.